If you know anything about dinosaurs, you are most likely familiar with Walking with Dinosaurs, a six-part miniseries by the BBC that aired in 1999. That's because it's considered by most to be the best dinosaur documentary series ever made. It's 25 years out of date, and new series that follow the nature documentary style have come out to fill the void, but Walking with Dinosaurs remains the pinnacle of dinosaur documentaries, shown to dino nerds, science classes, and more. It utilized some of the greatest elements of natural storytelling, special and practical effects, film locations, storyboarding, and planning ever seen in a documentary project. The team behind it, Tim Haynes, the BBC Science Unit, the Discovery Channel, BBC Worldwide, and more, were able to stretch a comparatively moderate budget into one of the most realistic paleontology series ever seen, a major part of why it has remained such a prominent element of any dinosaur educator's toolkit. It left a huge mark on the paleontology zeitgeist, and people have been clamoring for more for 25 years. Sure, we did eventually get the sequels, Walking with Beasts, Walking with Monsters, Chased by Dinosaurs, Chased by Sea Monsters, the one we don't talk about, and the one we really don't talk about, but everyone likes dinosaurs more than any other cool prehistoric critter. Many years in the making, I can now announce that our pleas have finally been answered. Walking with Dinosaurs is set to return for a 60-minute, six-episode sequel series and reimagining via BBC Studios and PBS produced with ZDF and France Televisions in 2025. According to the BBC, this new six-part series will take viewers on a unique journey back through time, revealing the incredible life stories of these long-lost giants. The original Walking with Dinosaurs series took a broad approach, telling the viewer a narrow story of one or a few dinosaurs while taking lots of time to flesh out the time period and region. It also shook the trend of paleontology documentaries and being fully immersive in the prehistoric worlds it created. No talking heads, no cutaways. The series functioned essentially like a nature documentary made by a crew that really went back in time to film the animals. The new series shakes that up again, returning to the usual paleontology documentary format with scenes of animals interacting with each other and their environments cut between scientists talking about their work and how they are able to prove what is shown in the dinosaur segments. A lot of the original series was based on knowledge from the time, but some was influenced by cutting-edge scientific discoveries. The new series takes this to an extreme by specifically showcasing stories about individual dinosaurs struggling to survive based on active dig sites and scientific studies going on right now. The BBC article states, There's never been a better time to travel back to the prehistoric. We're living through a golden age of paleontology that is transforming our understanding of dinosaurs. Around 50 new species are being identified every year, and science is revealing extraordinary new details about dinosaur biology and behavior. Across the globe, hundreds of dinosaur experts are currently scouring the wilds for new dig sites, and this series has exclusive access to some of the very best. The article continues. Jack Boodle, BBC Head of Commissioning, Specialist Factual said, A whole new generation of viewers is about to fall in love with Walking with Dinosaurs. The original series was one of the most exciting, factual shows of all time, and this reinvention builds on that amazing legacy. Each episode is underpinned by the very latest science, but is also filled with drama, making this a series for both dino lovers and people who just want to be told a great story. Not much is known about exactly which prehistoric animals will be involved, but some details have been revealed. There will be a story about a lonely Lusotitan looking for a mate, a Spinosaurus going fishing in the Moroccan rivers, and a young Triceratops fighting for their life against a Tyrannosaurus. Based on the premise of these episodes restricted to specific localities and active dig sites, I think we can assume these details mean there will be episodes about the Lorena Formation fauna of Portugal, the usual latest Cretaceous stars of Hell Creek, and interestingly, the Cretaceous world of the Kemkem -Kem beds of Morocco. Paleontologist Jim Kirkland confirmed that the Walking with Dinosaurs crew filmed with the Prehistoric Museum and the Utah Geological Survey for the series, including a whole episode starring Gastonia and Utah Raptor. So I think we can also safely assume the Cretaceous Cedar Mountain formation is going to be an episode. 
undergrad Declan Rourke posted about an Albertan episode, which most definitely means Cretaceous. But that could cover a few different formations, like Horseshoe Canyon, Dinosaur Park, St. Mary River, or Scholard formations. The lineup might indicate as much as four of the six episodes taking place in the Cretaceous period. The original series took the viewer on a journey across three time periods of the Mesozoic era. So are we seeing a major change? It's possible. There have been an incredible number of Cretaceous discoveries in the last 25 years. Obviously, there have been discoveries made in rock layers from the Triassic and Jurassic, but it seems not quite as many as in the Cretaceous rocks, and that is probably a fossil record bias issue. The younger the rock layers, the better the fossils, and the easier they are to excavate. That being said, a lot of the new stuff found about the Jurassic and Triassic periods would completely change how these periods were presented in the original Walking with Dinosaurs series. I would also like to point out that it's also quite possible that multiple dig sites and storylines may be shown per episode, so maybe there aren't as many as four Cretaceous episodes, and some of the known Cretaceous aged segments will be in one episode in order to teach the viewer about a general scientific concept. At this time, it's unknown precisely how the episodes will be organized. Let's take a quick look at the formations and times that have been confirmed to see what types of critters we might get to glimpse. Lorinha. The Lorinha Formation is a strip of rock dating to the late Jurassic and earliest Cretaceous, found in Portugal. The formation is roughly equivalent and contains similar dinosaur groups to the Morrison Formation of North America and the Tendaguru Beds of Tanzania. Lusotitan is already confirmed to be the main character of this segment, with his story being that of finding a mate. Lusotitan is a large brachiosaurid sauropod known from fossils of much of the spine and some arm bones and the shoulder girdles. World-renowned paleontologist and one of the lead scientific consultants for this new series, Thomas Holtz, has insinuated that at least one of the top predators of the time and place will show up to menace the Lusotitan. Theropod dinosaurs known from this formation include Allosaurus europaeus, Ceratosaurus, the Carcharodontosaur Lusovenator, Torvosaurus gurnii, and the notoriously hard to place Lorinhanosaurus. Considering many of these critters are Portuguese versions of North American fauna, nothing here is particularly novel. That being said, the Portuguese species of Torvosaurus is notoriously larger on average than the Portuguese species of Allosaurus. This is a reversal of what is seen in the Morrison Formation species of these genera, so that sort of thing would be neat to see or at least touched on. The 2011 Discovery Channel series Dinosaur Revolution and 2012 recut Dinotasia showcased this formation and relationship between the two theropods rather well, so maybe a retread is not necessary. Other critters that could be featured include the sauropods Lorinosaurus, Oceanotitan, Dinerosaurus, Zibi, the Ornithischians, Trimucrodon, Alocodon, Thyreophorans, Decentris, Dracopelta, Miragaya, the Ornithopods, Draconix, Dryosaurus, Eos Dryosaurus, Hesperonyx, Phylodon, the Pterosaur, Lusognathus, many early mammals, amphibians, lizards, and some weird crocodilomorphs. I personally hope to see Miragaya because it has not had much attention in most media. Chemchem. We know that Dr. Nizar Ibrahim will be involved with this project, probably a consultant and starring as a presenter for the Spinosaurus segment, since he directly confirmed his involvement. I personally think this may mean that Ibrahim and colleagues may have found more Spinosaurus specimens, because it would otherwise be a very risky thing to include a, such a controversial dinosaur as Spinosaurus in a blockbuster series like Walking with Dinosaurs. Aside from Spinosaurus, the Chem Chem beds played host to a huge variety of dinosaurs, fish, pterosaurs, and crocodilomorphs, so this episode will undoubtedly be great for representation. When it comes to dinosaurs, this formation has spewed out Carcharodontosaurus, Deltadromius, Robachisaurus, and Sauroniops, which isn't a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if this episode brings in dinosaurs found in nearby rock formations from the same time, something the original series did, as well as many other documentary series. 
Paralatitan and Bahariasaurus from the Egyptian Bahariya Formation probably lived at the same time as the critters of the Kemkem -Kem beds. Anyway, the more common stuff in the Kemkem -Kem has been a bunch of giant fish like the Sauskate Onchopristus, Hybodont sharks, the bulldog fish Idacar, Coelacanth axelrodic thes, the smooth-faced Concavectum, among many more. I hope this episode highlights the crocodilomorphs as well since their fossils are more diverse than the dinosaurs. Pancake crocs, Laganosuchus, and Aegisuchus. Iguana croc, Lavocachampsa. Wolf croc, Anteusuchus. Rat croc, Adaripesuchus ratoides. The more conventional, Elosuchus. Dog croc, Hamadasuchus, among many more. Crocs were mostly absent from everyone's favorite prehistoric planet, so it would be great to see the great diversity of these animals during the Mesozoic. I'm honestly looking forward to Spinosaurus the least, only because I think there are other critters that would be better for a main character, even though I still like Spinosaurus. Unless, of course, Ibrahim and friends have found something truly revolutionary. Hell Creek my least anticipated segment is the one that always has to be included in every single dinosaur project ever, Tyrannosaurus. That being said, a true realistic fight between a Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops is pretty much entirely absent from every single dinosaur project, so it will be refreshing to actually see something like that go down. Interestingly, Thomas Holt stated that their Tyrannosaurus will bear no resemblance to the one from the original series. I can understand why they would do this, but I really like the color scheme of the original design. It's its only redeeming quality in my opinion. I hope to see the main character Triceratops interact with a Taurosaurus, because that is another thing largely absent from all other documentaries. Triceratops was not the only horned dinosaur across North America during the latest Cretaceous. It would also be very interesting if this segment doesn't actually take place in Hell Creek, but a different layer from the same time, like the Denver, Lance, Laramie, Evanston, or Scholard formations. I suppose it doesn't matter much, since fauna are largely the same across these rock layers, but I'm just getting bored with Hell Creek specifically. The usual experts in segments like this include Edmontosaurus, Anzu, Ankylosaurus, Thessalosaurus, and Ornithomimus, but there are a few that have never really appeared in documentaries before, such as the newly described Alvarosaur Triarcuncus, the Pachycephalosaur Spherotholus, the Notosaur Denversaurus, the tiny Leptoceratops, or the very controversial Dakota Raptor. The diversity of turtles, Caristodeers, crocodilomorphs, and pterosaurs would also be a welcome addition to Walking with Dinosaurs too. Cedar Mountain Jim Kirkland's confirmation of Gastonia and Utahraptor indicate an episode about the Cedar Mountain Formation, the rock layer from which these critters have been found. So far, it seems the episode list covers the late Jurassic to the latest Cretaceous, so this episode could be a good early to mid Cretaceous representative. Other critters that could show up include the primitive Therizinosaur Falcarius, the eternal duo Tenontosaurus and Deinonychus, the troodontid Gemini Raptor, the possible Therizinosaur Martha Raptor, hopefully the early Tyrannosauroid Moros, the Allosauroid Siats, the sauropods Venenosaurus, Moabosaurus, Mietosaurus, Cedarosaurus, Brontomerus, and Abetosaurus. The ornithopods Planicoxa, Iguana Colossus, Iani, Hippodraco, Eolambia, and Cedrorestes, plus the Thyreophorans, Peloroplites, Cedaropelta, and Anamantarx, as well as the usual non dinos. This segment will be super interesting to see, even though Utahraptor has been featured many times before. This is because the updated look of Utahraptor, constructed from well over a handful of skeletons, is drastically different and extremely unique to every single reconstruction of the animal ever featured in a documentary or movie. These things were massive, heavily built bruisers, adapted for tackling large prey with big fat heads and jaws that bent outwards for snagging onto limbs and skin. They were large enough to possibly have reduced feathering compared to most other dromaeosaurs, so any design they go with will ultimately be quite attention grabbing. Cretaceous Alberta 
Lastly is our fifth possible episode, the Albertan episode. Like I noted before, it's still unknown if these segments are all full episodes or if the show will take us to multiple locations and times per episode. It is at least semi-confirmed that some of these segments will be full episodes, but it's largely speculation for now. The Albertan episode could cover a few formations, Horseshoe Canyon, Dinosaur Park, St. Mary River, or Scholard formations, which are over various itty bitty tidbits of the late Cretaceous. I kind of hope the T-Rex vs Triceratops segment takes place in the Albertan episode since both of these critters are present in Albertan fossil layers just so we can get an extra episode outside the Cretaceous period. An Albertan episode may cover Pachyrhinosaurus, Regaloceratops, Anchiceratops, Edmontonia, Montanoceratops, Albertosaurus, any handful of Troodonts, Dromaeosaurs, Pachycephalosaurs, and Odontosaurs, Euoplocephalus, Hypracosaurus, Edmontosaurus, Saurolophus, Rhinoceratops, Eotriceratops, Diaplosaurus, Panoplosaurus, Platypelta, Scolosaurus, Centrosaurus, Chasmosaurus, Mercuriceratops, Spinops, Styracosaurus, Unescoceratops, Vagaceratops, Corythosaurus, Gryposaurus, Lambiosaurus, Herocerolophus, Formanocephaly, Gravitholus, Hansusia, Spherotholus, Stegosaurus, Quipalong, Rativates, Chirostenotes, Parxosaurus, Alberta Venator, Albertonychus, Apatoraptor, Atrociraptor, and Dromyceomimus. It would be super neat if it highlighted the possible ecological relationship between Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, or Despletosaurus. And that's about all we know of the episodes of Walking with Dinosaurs 2. I really hope for a Triassic episode to balance out the major concentration of Cretaceous material. The Cretaceous stuff is great and all, but I think the farther back you go, the weirder life gets, and that can offer up some really juicy dramatic material. This project has been known to many parts of the various paleontological communities out there for a while. There have been posts by people working on the series since 2023 with only the vaguest of hints. Speaking of people working on this thing, let me segue into who we know is working on the project. There's a whole bunch of Canadians because of the Albertan episode, which includes most people working at the Phil Curry Museum in Alberta, so I think we can probably assume Phil Curry himself will be involved, plus Greg Funston, Hank Sharp, Declan Rourke, Jake Milligan, Caitlin Lindblad, Mark James Powers, Christiana Garros, Koi Naguyan, and Emily Bamforth. Plus Jim Kirkland, Nizar Ibrahim, Thomas Holtz, Natalia Hagielska, Steve Brusati, Tom Parker, and Matteo Fabri. I would think Jack Horner might have some input, but who knows. And that, folks, is about all I have been able to uncover about Walking with Dinosaurs 2. What do you hope is included in the sequel? I really want to know what you guys think, so let me know in the comments and we can start a conversation. Speculation is the name of the game. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.